Hello and welcome to the video. This is my video update video, I guess, on these things here. This is the Walksnail Fat Shark system. This is the Walksnail version of the goggles. There's also the Fat Shark version as well, which is in a snazzy white and light grey. Now, this has been something that I've been playing with for the last two months. I did a video a while ago where I did my first video on it to try and help dispel some of the confusion. Because it's one of the big news things that's happened this year in radio control, all the content creators immediately jumped all over it with opinions from game changer to trash and everything in between. And there was lots of reasons why that kind of stuff was happening. See that original video, link below, if you kind of want to see my full thoughts on it. I own four HD systems. This just happens to be one of them. And I only fly two regularly. And there's a reason for that. Those two fit the way that I fly. They fit the models that I like to fly and the way I like to enjoy the hobby. Each of those systems have their own strengths and weaknesses. No one is perfect, including this one. But getting the one that most closely matches how you fly and how you like to enjoy the hobby is going to be the best experience for you. Two of my least favourite words in the kind of YouTube land are best and better. Because actually, I can't tell you whether this is best, better than the DJI system or the HD0 system or whatever you have. Because actually, it really depends on what you are looking for, where you are as a pilot, how much money you have, whether or not you prefer open or closed systems, whether you like to fly range, whether latency is important. There's a whole massive list of things that you need to think about to choose the right HD system that's important to you. For me, as I said in that first video, it's pretty easy. I like systems that are easy to use. I like systems that don't rely on lots of complicated authorization. I like systems that are less proprietary and more open. I love it when manufacturers actually work with third party developers and the projects that we use in the hobby, things like iNav and Betaflight to produce a system that actually gives pilots what we want rather than what they want to sell us. And that's the reason that for me, I'm a big fan of both Walksnail and the HD0 system. But today we're going to talk about Walksnail. However, it is useful very quickly to run over why I think you would choose one of the systems over the other. DJI has been the main game in town for a very long time. Lots of people particularly love that. I have the DJI system in here. I have it in lots of models. It works incredibly well. I'm not a fan of the DJI business model. I don't like them. I don't think they're very good for the general hobby, but they're very good at making kit that works nicely. All of the recent innovations with the DJI kit, like the WTFOS stuff, the ability to get a HDMI out signal so you can view it on something like an Android device, have all come from the community. And that is DJI's way. They don't like to keep adding stuff into their product. They would rather bring out a new improved version and you have to go and buy that new improved version. It's their business model. It's why we've had so many versions of things like the Mavic. HD0, a gentleman behind it, Carl Zhao. HD0 was what Fatshark was collaborating with for their HD system. It is amazing for racers. It gives super low latency and it uses brute force to try and maintain that low latency even when you fly at huge distances. Some of the videos I've seen, DJI systems topping out about 13, 13 and a half kilometers maximum range with all of the tricks where the HD0 and the Walksnail system can go 30 kilometers if that's important to you. However, HD0's image will suffer and the on-screen display will become patchy as it prioritizes the video to try and maintain that super low latency. So if you're a racer and that's what you're interested in, HD0 is a fab choice. However, if you want a DJI style experience, whereas you fly further away, the system will do things like vary the latency, will increase it to maintain the connection and maintain the image, Walksnail is the one for you. It's fundamentally different from the DJI system in that they are more open, they are working with third-party devices, and the latest update that's just come out, the latest firmware update, includes things like a custom OSD for iNav, which as an iNav fixed wing pilot, I am over the moon about. I wanted a system that was far more open and had much better interaction with the community. And in the past two months, 
Walk Snail have delivered on all pieces. Is it perfect? No, there are still two things that kind of annoy me about it. One is the HDMI out from these goggles into my little HDMI screen doesn't work still on the latest version. And at the moment, it doesn't record the on-screen display. However, I hear that that on-screen display support is absolutely coming. So if I run through the stuff that we've got out of the Walk Snail system in the last two months, we've had the first tranche of ready-to-fly models with Walk Snail. We've had the 1S board, which is 5 volt only and perfect for whoops. I've had one in and reviewed that. We have an on-screen display that now understands Betaflight, iNav, Ardu Pilot, and KISS. We have custom fonts in here. We have a color on-screen display. We do have the HDMI out. Hopefully that's going to work better in the near future. And it, this gives far more range than the DJI system, with some reviewers getting over 30 kilometers with maximum power and funky antennas. In the new firmware that was released on the 4th of November, version 28.32.10, it optimized the RF performance, it again improved the image quality, and it added a new color iNav on-screen display that you didn't have to add separately, it was all part of the update. It optimized the smoothing when you had poor radio frequency reception and reduced the latency, and fixed an issue where there was a bitrate display wasn't accurate during very low signals. And I've installed it on these and very very happy with the result. I'd like a smaller font than the larger one that's by default but again with custom fonts that allows you to play with all that stuff. One of the iNav developers that I know quite well has actually been working with Walksnail to help create that font. I'm not sure it's the exact font that he created for them but he taught them all about how the iNav stuff works and that kind of collaboration is stuff that makes me very very happy to see. Back in August when I first looked at this, it was more of kind of a, this is brand new, isn't it? Interesting kind of video and helping put it in context with everything else. However, the last two months I've had a really good experience with this. It has worked great and every single firmware update has improved it. So now it kind of bears no resemblance to the first images that I got out of it when I very first got the system. I now feel a lot more confident about this. And along with the new module that they're currently promoting, which you can fit onto your analog goggles, which provides analog pilots out there, a cheaper way to get into the walk snail system. It kind of starting to feel like this is going to be around for a while. So for you analog pilots who are all sitting on the fence waiting for spring to make your investment, at the moment, if low latency isn't what it's all about for you with racing, I think this is the one you need to look at if you are interested in a more open system that has that community engagement and that less proprietary approach to the market. Last thing, there are two top tips that I'll give you if you get in the Walksnail system. First of all is make sure you update the firmware on the goggles and also on the Avatar um, airside unit as well. It's really easy to do. I'll put a link down to my video below that shows the process. And secondly, invest in some antennas. Uh, the antennas that came in the box with the Walksnell unit were poor. Uh, Walksnell, I think, have updated it now, so they ship it with two patches. I've been flying mine with Pico patches at the front from Menis RC. And historically, I've been using these little stubby antennas at the top from Menis RC. However, they've just started to come out with the periscope with the right connection and left hand circular polarized which means when you wear them the back of your head isn't kind of uh, covering these antennas up so it means that you get better reception all the way around but those are the two tips firmware get yourself a good set of antennas so i'll update you in a couple of months uh, while i continue to fly so for all those of you that are sat on the fence in analog land well, waiting to make a decision about which system to go to we will circle back and look again this again in another two months but I am impressed this is a system that I love it's also a system that as you've probably already seen I've put inside my dolphin the Atom RC dolphin is my top number one favorite plane to fly with iNav inside and now I like this so much I've actually replaced the analog system in there with a walk snail unit and that I think should tell you everything you need to know about how impressive this stuff is Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.